This tutorial will show you how to count ranked choice or preference ballots in a multiple seat election and will feature a couple of tips that will help you do this quickly and accurately. Preference voting is easy to grasp if you understand multiple round voting because the two methods are so similar. Let's first review multiple round voting. With three or more candidates in a race, there is no guarantee that any single candidate will receive a majority of the votes cast in the first round. So the candidate with the fewest votes is eliminated and another round of balloting is done. This continues until one candidate gets a majority of the votes cast. Preference voting is the same as multiple round voting, except that all votes in the election are cast on a single ballot. Instead of marking one and only one candidate, each voter ranks the candidates in order of preference. If no candidate gets a majority of the votes cast, the candidate with the fewest votes is eliminated and his ballots go to the voter's next highest preference. This continues until one candidate gets a majority of the votes cast. Let's step it up a notch and pretend that 16 voters are choosing among five candidates to fill two seats. Here is the first tip. Assign a capital letter to each candidate and instruct the voters to write these letters on their ballots instead of the names of the candidates. This makes counting faster and more accurate. Look at the difference between a ballot with names and a ballot with letters. Handwritten names are often difficult to decipher, which slows the counting process. Capital letters are easier to read, which speeds the counting process. Here is the second tip. Put a sticky note on the counting table, one sticky note for each candidate. Sort the ballots into stacks, one stack per candidate. Count the stack and have someone verify your count. Place these stacks above the sticky notes and you won't have to count them again. Write on your tally sheet the number of votes cast for each candidate. When a candidate is eliminated and his ballots are distributed among the remaining candidates, place those ballots below the sticky notes. Then, when you count them, you simply add the number of ballots below the sticky notes to the number on your tally sheet from the previous round to get the total votes cast for each candidate in the current round of voting. The remainder of this tutorial will be a demonstration of this counting process. Pretend that these 16 ballots are the ballots that were cast. You can see that the first preference on ballots 1 through 5 is candidate A. The first preference on ballots 6 through 9 is candidate B. The first preference on ballot 10 is candidate C. The first preference on ballots 11 through 13 is candidate D. And the first preference on ballots 14 through 16 is candidate E. Because there are five candidates, there are five stacks of ballots, one stack for each candidate. A sticky note is used to label each stack. The ballots are sorted into stacks according to the highest preference on the ballot. Each stack is counted and placed above the sticky note. The number of votes for each candidate is noted on round one of the tally sheet. The votes are totaled and a majority is computed. If any candidate had received a majority of the votes cast, he would be the winner. But because no candidate got a majority in the first round, the candidate receiving the fewest votes is eliminated, candidate C in this case, and his ballot is distributed to the candidate who is the voter's next highest preference. Inspecting ballot 10, we see that the voter's next highest preference is candidate D. So ballot 10 is placed below the sticky note labeled D. The ballots below the sticky notes are counted and added to the number in the previous column of the tally sheet. Candidates A, B, and E did not get any additional votes, so their round 2 vote totals match their round 1 vote totals. D received one additional vote. 3 plus 1 is 4, so his round 2 vote total is 4. Round 2 votes are totaled, and a majority is computed. No candidate got a majority in round 2, so the candidate with the fewest votes, candidate E in this case, is eliminated and his ballots will be distributed among the remaining candidates according to the voter's next highest preference. Before doing so, however, 
Any ballots below the sticky notes should be placed on the appropriate stacks above the sticky notes. Inspecting the three ballots in the stack for E, we see that the voter's next highest preference on ballots 14 and 15 is B, and the voter's next highest preference on ballot 16 is D. So we put ballots 14 and 15 below the sticky note for B, and ballot 16 below the sticky note for D. The ballots below the sticky notes are counted and added to the number in the previous column of the tally sheet. A did not get any additional votes, 5 plus 0 is 5. B received two additional votes, 4 plus 2 is 6. D received one additional vote, 4 plus 1 is 5. The votes are totaled and a majority is computed. No candidate got a majority in round 3, so the candidate with the fewest votes must be eliminated. Before doing so, however, any ballots below the sticky notes should be placed on the appropriate stacks above the sticky notes. Candidates A and D have the same number of votes, so we must toss a coin to determine which will remain in the race and which will be eliminated. The ballot counter assigns heads to A and tails to D, agrees that face up means the candidate will remain in the race, and then flips the coin. It lands heads up, so A remains in the race and D is eliminated. If three or more candidates are tied, you can use a die to determine which of them is eliminated. Assign a number of the die to each candidate and roll the die. If an assigned number is rolled, then the candidate assigned to that number is eliminated. Inspecting the five ballots in the stack for D, we see that the voter's next highest preference on ballot 10 is B, and the voter's next highest preference on ballots 11, 12, and 13 is A. We also see that the voter who cast ballot 16 did not express a fourth preference, so that ballot cannot be given to any of the remaining candidates. Ballots 11, 12, and 13 go below the sticky note for A, ballot 10 goes below the sticky note for B, and ballot 16 goes to the exhausted stack. The ballots below the sticky notes are counted and added to the number in the previous column of the tally sheet. A received three additional votes, 5 plus 3 is 8, B received one additional vote, 6 plus 1 is 7. The votes are totaled and a majority is computed. This time, the number of votes cast is 15, and the majority is 8. Candidate A received a majority of the votes cast and is the winner of the first seat. Filling the second seat is a new election with a new tally sheet. Again, there are five candidates, so there will be five stacks of ballots initially, one stack per candidate. The ballots are sorted into stacks according to the highest preference on the ballot and placed above the sticky notes. You will notice that the number of ballots in each stack matches the number of ballots cast in round one of the race for the first seat. Now, the winner of the first seat is treated as though he was eliminated, and the votes cast for him are distributed among the remaining candidates according to each voter's next highest preference. We can see that the next highest preference on four of the five ballots is C, and on one of them is D. The ballots are placed below the sticky notes, counted, and then added to the number of ballots received by each candidate initially. These numbers are the results of the first round. B had four votes and received no more. Four plus zero is four. C had one vote, but received four more. One plus four is five. D had three votes and received one more. Three plus one is four. E had three votes and received no more. Three plus zero is three. These numbers are written on the tally sheet. The votes are totaled, and a majority is computed. No candidate gets a majority in the first round, so the candidate with the fewest votes is eliminated. E in this case, and his ballots will be distributed among the remaining candidates according to the voter's next highest preferences. Before doing so, however, any ballots below the sticky notes should be placed on the appropriate stacks above the sticky notes. 
Inspecting the three ballots in the stack for E, we see that the voter's next highest preference on ballots 14 and 15 is B, and the voter's next highest preference on ballot 16 is D. So we put ballots 14 and 15 below the sticky note for B, and ballot 16 below the sticky note for D. The ballots below the sticky notes are counted and added to the number in the previous column of the tally sheet. B received two additional votes, 4 plus 2 is 6. C did not get any more votes, 5 plus 0 is 5. D received one additional vote, 4 plus 1 is 5. These numbers are written on the tally sheet, the votes are totaled, and a majority is computed. No candidate gets a majority in this round, so the candidate with the fewest votes must be eliminated. Any ballots below the sticky notes should be placed on the appropriate stacks above the sticky notes. No candidate gets a majority in this, the second round, so the candidate with the fewest votes must be eliminated, but C and D are tied with the fewest votes. So we must toss a coin to determine which will remain in the race and which will be eliminated. The ballot counter assigned heads to C and tails to D, agrees that face up means the candidate will remain in the race, and then flips the coin. It lands tails up, so D stays in the race and C is eliminated. Inspecting the five ballots in the stack for C, we see that the voter's next highest preference on ballots 1, 3, and 10 is D, and the voter's next highest preference on ballots 2 and 4 is not given. So we put ballots 1, 3, and 10 below the sticky note for D, and we put ballots 2 and 4 in the exhausted stack. The ballots below the sticky notes are counted and added to the number in the previous column of the tally sheet. B received no additional votes, so his vote total for this round remains at 6. D received 3 additional votes, 5 plus 3 is 8. The votes are totaled and a majority is computed. Candidate D received a majority of the votes cast and is the winner of the second seat. I hope this demonstration has clarified the process of counting preference ballots. Please send any questions, comments, or suggestions to me at lowellcallnelson at gmail.com. Thank you and good luck.